Well, good morning, class. Good morning, you. Not the whole class, just you. Glad you're here. Uh, <clears throat> I, I uh, apologize again about the length of the presentation when we last met online. 40 minutes is a long time. I do realize that our classes used to be 45, 48 minutes long. They're 40 minutes long now. They'll be getting longer sooner, but uh, that was long. And I hope that you went through and you looked at it closely because I really kind of developed a lot of the why for what we're just going to look at today. So uh, I'm going to, we are not going to go on to section 921 today. We're just going to do a little cleanup for 913 uh, before we move on. So let's first of all kind of um, look at the mechanic, the mechanical rules, some of the things that we're doing based on last week. So if you re recall, by the end of the lesson on, on Thursday, Friday of last week, we were able to do several things with absolute many inequalities. So we should be able to solve inequalities that contain absolute values and inequalities that don't contain absolute values, so both. So here's a nice collection of the types of things that we should be able to solve. Um, pretty straightforward. We've got some that are greater than, right, the absolute values on the, the left-hand side and that's greater than 12. Absolute values on the left-hand side, it's less than seven. So I'm reading these from left to right. If your absolute value is greater, greater, it's gonna, your solutions are that way. If it's less than, it's coming in. Um, greater than or equal to, less than or equal means different things. Uh, on this one, nine times the absolute value of x plus one, we should be isolating the absolute value portion first. Um, yeah. This is kind of like a granddaddy of, of everything. Before we attempt to get rid of the absolute value, we need to kind of isolate it. And I recommend isolating it on the left-hand side of the inequality and then proceeding from there. So we are kind of seeing this overall pattern where the absolute value, um, the absolute value of something, the absolute value of something can either be, um, it's a bunch of things, right? It can be less than, it can be greater than, it could be less than or it could be equal to, right? So that's the less than or equal to. Uh, it can be greater than or equal to. And depending on which one of those we have, right, we're gonna do uh, different things. But the absolute value of something is one of these to some value, right? The absolute value is less than a value, it's greater than a value, less than or equal to a value, greater than or equal to a value. And uh, on the first two here where we have that it's less than or greater than, these will contain an open interval, right? So on our, on our number line, when we graph these, these will be the open circles because it's indicating that it's not containing that value that's just the boundary for the, the value, but it's not part of the solution. And then if we have the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, uh, not only is that the boundary, but it includes that value also. So this would be a, this is a closed boundary. We would be shading this one in. So let's take a look at our beautiful number nine. So the absolute value of an expression is less than a value. So if we see that, the absolute value of some expression is less than a value. Uh, in this case, what we're gonna do is, clearly we're gonna have open boundaries, right? And it's less than, less than. Because it's less than, uh, it's going to be inside of that range, right? So uh, the expression itself, right, the absolute value of the expression, it's less than something. So these are the areas where you're either less than the upper bound or you're inside of this upper bound, but this is the less than region. So when we see less than, it's gonna help us recognize that we're gonna look at two things, and there's the mechanics that we have um, for doing that. Now, if, if the uh, absolute value of the expression is less than or equal to, the only difference is, is now we're including these boundary points, including the boundary points, but less than means that we're and this is probably goofy. Well, I don't know why I want to be on here. Less than, it's like we're coming still inside, in, inside that region, right? Inside that region, like, like this animation, right? So it's still inside of there. So all of these, including the in parts or points, are part of our solution. 
Now we can go the opposite way, right? If the absolute value of our expression is greater than the value, here we have our open boundaries again. Open boundaries. But now it's away from this, right? So it's going to be greater than, greater. It's going to go out this way. So greater than, I'm saying that strangely, greater, it's going to be or. So it's going to be an or, and it's it's either on this side or it's on that side. It's either above, <clears throat> it's either above this or it's below this. And then if we swap this out, <clears throat> we have greater than or equal to. The change here is now. <clears throat> yes, you got it. It includes the endpoints. Beautiful. And again, above and below. Are where our solutions are. So coming back to here, we have these five examples. These five examples are going to be the five problems that we look at. So let's look at the first one. Uh, it says that you have the absolute value of 3x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 12. So the greater than in indicates that we're going to be including uh, the boundary point. So All right, let's do this and see if it makes sense based on our work from Friday. Um, so we are here. So this is um, an inequality with absolute value. This is this is the absolute value of 3x plus 2 is greater or equal to 11. So to me, there's going to be the word or that joins these. And there's going to be two things that I consider. It's either going to be less than the upper bound. So this whole thing, 3x plus 2 has to be less than or equal to 12. Uh, or on the other side of that, the 3x plus 2 has to be more than or equal to negative 12. And that's exactly the pattern that we observed when we were talking about Henry and Destiny and all the friends and the bicycles and whatever was going on last week. So on each of these, I solve them independently. Over on the left one here, I, I'll take away a 2 from both sides, so I get that 3x is greater than or equal to, uh, this would be tw negative 12 minus 2 would be negative 14. And if I divide both sides by 3, I get that x is greater than or equal to negative 14 thirds. Ooh. On the other side of that, I'm going to take away, on the other side of the or, we'll take away 2 from both sides again, but this time I'm going to get that 3x is less than or equal to 10, therefore x is less than or equal to 10 thirds. Now, the question is, do these values do exactly what they're supposed to do, right? Are these, are these the boundary points, and are we pointing at the right, the right direction? So on a, if, if I was going to consider this on a number line, right, we've got these points 0, and I've got one, one number is at 10 thirds, which is about you know 3 and a third, so I'll just put this here. This is at 10 thirds. And over here is uh, negative 14 thirds. And we're saying that our solutions are those things that are including these points, right? These things that are either greater than the 10 thirds or less than negative 14 thirds. That's what we think our solution is. Um, let's, let's do the odd thing. Let's, let's go to Desmos and see if we can't look at this and see uh, if it agrees with what we have here. So I'm in Desmos. I've typed the inequality exactly as it appeared in our problem. And I, I don't need to see the y-axis, so I can come in here and I can turn off the y-axis if I don't want to see it. Um, and so I can see just the number line right here. And if I turn this on, you can see, ah, greater. Right? It's greater than this expression, so it's greater than 3x plus 2. So that means it's moving away from it, either above or below. So what we're doing is apparently doing a great job. So this point right here, if, if I look at this point, this should be the point uh, 10 thirds. And in fact, I could come in here, I can say, if I want to, I could say uh, x is equal to 10 thirds. And if I do that, it's just like, oh, that's that's nice. It totally gave me that, that spot there. And then I could come in here, oh, that's beautiful, 10 thirds. And then the other spot, if I want, I can come in and I'd say this should be negative 14 thirds. And, uh-oh, nope. No, that's not even the right number. I want to say x equals negative 14 thirds. Uh, it did choose to make that one a blue dot, and it's harder to see. Um, you can come in here and 
click this and then change these colors. So I'll make this one a beautiful green and I'll say done. And now you can see, yeah, those are exactly the right spot. So I think we have good evidence that what we're doing is working for us. Let's just keep going with this technique and see how far we can get. So let's look at our next example. Um, on this next one, we're going to solve this inequality. My recommendation is that we get the absolute value portion alone first. That way we can break this into the two parts. So I'm going to divide both sides of this by 9. When I do, I get the absolute value of x plus 1 is less than or equal to 27 divided by 9 is 3. So this is less than. So this is, this is going to be coming into, into the, the overlapping region, right? So less than, I'm thinking and, and. Two things, one of them is just going to be exactly as it appears here. So I've got the x plus 1 less than or equal to 3. On the other side, I've got the x plus 1. And now I'm going to write greater than or equal to negative 3. All right, real simple. If I divide uh, or if I subtract 1 from both sides of this, I get that x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And on the other side of this, subtract 1, x is our less than or equal to positive 3. Two. So that's easy enough to check. Just visually, uh, we can plug those in and see that they're doing the right thing. So for example, if I take the negative 4, put it here, that's going to make this a negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is um, 20. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. 3 times 9 is 27. So I've definitely hit the right boundary point. Let's do take a look at this and see uh, how much Desmos agrees or disagrees with what we've got going on here. So I'll go back to Desmos. Desmos, where are you at? There you are. Hi, Desmos. And we'll go ahead and type the same thing. So we've got 9 times the absolute value of x plus 1. Close off the absolute value, and that has to be less than or equal to 27. So, ah, it's beautiful. Look at this. It's the, full, it's the 2 up here, so it's less than the 2. right? So the, it's less than the 2, but it's greater than the negative 4. So this less less than and greater or is working out well for us. Um, let's go back and do our next problem. Next one. Oh, do we really need to do this? This seems so simple. So this is less than. So this is going to be an and that joins them. One of them is just going to be x minus 1 less than 7. So I just wrote everything down. Over here, x minus 1 is going to be greater than and then a negative 7. So you can see it's I keep this the same, less than, over here, negative 7. Uh, if I add 1 to both sides, I get x is greater than, uh, adding 1, negative 6. And over here, I get x's are less than, if I add 1, I get 8. So again, if I put 8 in and if I put negative 6 in, it definitely confirms that I've got the right boundaries. Uh, this is the word and, so it should be the stuff coming into closer to me. It's this thing and it's that thing. And I want to check it in Desmos again, just because it's just, this is new. We haven't done this a lot. So the absolute value of, oh, I want to get rid of all of you. The absolute value of x minus 1, close the absolute value. Whoops, not, it has to be less than 7. Okay, so you can see on the one end we've got, yeah, it is greater than the negative 6, and it's also less than the 8, so it's this lapping region in, beside, in between here. All right, let's skip ahead and just do one final one, kind of, it will make it our grand finale. So we are going to jump down and look at, uh-oh, uh-oh, is this here? The one I want, oh, there it is, this is the one I wanted to do. All right, so again, mm, we do we do not want to try and get rid of the get the absolute value, uh, break it up into the two required parts until it's isolated. So I'm going to begin by subtracting five from both sides. This is going to become two times the absolute value of three x plus four, and that has to be um, less than the number uh, twelve. I took away five from each side of the inequality. And then over here, I've got the absolute value of 3x plus 4, and that has to be less than 6. Okay, so it's less than, less than, great or, less and, less and. It's going to be and, less and. So on the one side, this stuff, I'm just copying this down. This 3x, this plus 4, 
less than 6. You see that this looks exactly like it does up above. On the other side of that, I have to consider this negative spot. So I've got the 3x, the plus 4, my inequality flips directions, and then this is a negative 6. All right, so now I take away 4 from both sides here. This is going to give me that 3x is greater than, hmm, take away 4, negative 10. x has to be greater than negative 10 thirds. Okay, and then and, so this should be an overlapped region in the middle. Um, this is going to be that 3, whoops, take away 4, 3x has to be less than 2. So that means that x must be less than 3 halves. So we're less than 3 halves positive, but greater than 10 thirds. And we'll let's go back to Desmos one final time today uh, in Desmos. We're going to go ahead and <clears throat> type that. So I've got the 2 times the absolute value. Oops. 2 times the absolute value of 3x plus 4. Close the absolute value. Add 5. And it has to be less than the number 17. Ooh. So 2 times the absolute value of 3x plus 4 plus 5 has to be less than 17. And here's our solution. And these two points, you can see they're dashed boundaries because it was strictly less than. So these, these are not including. So this up here, I suspect, is 3 halves. Hmm. Oh, that's not 3 halves, is it? Uh-oh, Mr. Roberts, check this out. Good thing you looked at that because if I divide both sides by 3, I get 2 thirds. Okay, so this is not... Yeah, because 3 halves would be right here at 1.5. So this is 2 thirds and le less than 2 thirds, but not including 2 thirds. And over here is the uh, negative 10 thirds. And I can show both of those if I want to confirm. I could say, let's look at um, x equals 2 thirds. And you can see I hit that same spot with the black line. And then also I'll look at x equals negative 10 thirds. Yeah, there's that blue line. So this is my solution. Um, and it would be the word and that joins them. Um, and if I wanted to show this on a number line, well, you can see what it would look like, right? It would be an open circle here at uh, two-thirds and then going this direction, an open circle here at negative ten-thirds, and all the points in between would be solutions. They would all work. All right, that's it. Uh, 17 minutes, better than 40 minutes. Uh, have a great day. Uh, we will move on to the 9.2s starting tomorrow.